Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and today something just a little bit different. It has been an amazing year this year with all of the Falcon 9 launches, Crew Dragon Progress, and Starlink news. The fairings are even beginning to be reused now as well. Around all of this, the new prototype vehicle Starhopper was constructed, flown, and even retired already. Um, and now everything I've just mentioned there has happened in 2019. It's sometimes a little difficult to comprehend just how fast the developments at SpaceX have been progressing. The level of innovation going on right now is just crazy. So what I'm doing today is taking a speed run to show you the amazing progress that SpaceX has made from 2008 right up to today. I've even got a few snippets of the latest Starship work going on at the very end. It's all chronological and as we proceed through here you'll get a good picture at just how fast SpaceX has evolved over the last decade and more importantly just how fast it is beginning to accelerate. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. So yes, our story starts in 2008. SpaceX, privately funded, was trying desperately to get their Falcon 1 vehicle to orbit to demonstrate the capability. The first two had already failed. They needed a mission to get to orbit in order to qualify for funding. This third flight for SpaceX here was devastating. The first stage recontacted the second stage, causing the third mission failure. SpaceX kept on developing and testing equipment after this failure. There was one more chance, a fourth attempt to get the Falcon 1 to orbit. SpaceX with Elon Musk sunk every spare dollar into this last mission and this launch was all or nothing and luckily for us this mission was a complete success not only that it paved the way for funding from various contracts to be put forward allowing SpaceX's story to continue NASA playing of course a large part in this providing funding for Falcon 9 development along with the Dragon capsule only two years later the first Falcon 9 had been developed and successfully flown to orbit providing a number of critical funding opportunities from NASA of themselves. So what SpaceX had already done as a private company was amazing, but not everyone saw it that way. Neil Armstrong, Gene Cernan have both testified against commercial spaceflight in the way that you're developing it, and I wonder what you think of that. I was very sad to see that uh, because those guys are, yeah, you know, those guys are heroes of mine, so it's really tough. You know, I, I wish they would come and visit and, and see the hardware that we're doing here. And, and I think that would change their mind. They inspired you to do this, didn't they? Yes. And to see them casting stones in your direction. Difficult. Now, as it turned out, Neil Armstrong had at the time been quite saddened by how the question was raised in the interview and had written into 60 Minutes to discount the way some of this was stated. All the same, there was plenty of people and groups that were not fond of what SpaceX were doing. Regardless of what anyone thought, SpaceX pushed forward and in 2012, that very same year, the Falcon 9 and Dragon completed its very first successful mission to the International Space Station. This was huge. This flight was known as the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services Program 2 mission, COTS-2. The Dragon successfully launched from Cape Canaveral on the 22nd of May 2012, and during the mission's first three days, all of the objectives were successfully completed. The next phase of the mission then kicked in, where berthing could take place here using the Canadarm. The Dragon capsule stayed up here for six days, where astronauts then unloaded cargo and reloaded the Dragon with new cargo to return to Earth. This was super exciting, right? The Falcon 9 and Dragon had just become certified to start regular cargo mission deliveries. This is where things started to get crazy. We had grasshopper flights trying to test new landing systems. We had more commercial resupply missions up to the International Space Station. This is all in the same year, in 2012. In 2013, more of the same, except this time our grasshopper missions were starting to take higher flights, and the next generation of Falcon 9 came in 60% heavier, 60% more thrust, and with the engines arranged in the octaweb configuration rather than the previous 3x3. 
In 2014, we had the F9R test vehicles testing out all of the infrastructure that was going to be needed to start attempting to land a Falcon 9 booster. Amazing stuff there. Elon Musk unveiled the first Crew Dragon prototype. At the same time, we pretty much had first stages re-entering and just softly touching down in the ocean. We then had the first landing attempt on a drone ship. Of course, there was a number of failures that just seemed to add even more excitement to the whole progress. The failures were one of the best parts. We had the pad abort test going on, and then we had a disaster there with CRS-7. That actually set SpaceX back roughly six months before this next Orbcom 2 mission was actually sent up. But it was worth waiting for because it was our very first Falcon 9 landing. This was a game changer. This was the first time an orbital class rocket booster had landed in this way. This is just under four years ago and it's almost become commonplace now to see these boosters landing. There has been plenty of little mishaps along the way, a lot of failed tests. It took a lot longer to stick the landing on the drone ship, but there we go. April 2016, CRS-8, that was the first successful landing on the drone ship. And the same time, of course, when Flat Earth Society members thought that the videos were all played backwards. Since then, of course, they've just made the claim that it's all CGI instead. Much easier to just discount everything as fake. SpaceX kept on pushing the boundaries with the boosters and the landings to see how far they can push it. And as time went by, of course, those mishaps became less and less frequent to the point where it just became commonplace. By mid-2016, we were getting better and better footage. There was all sorts of crazy footage from onboard cameras. There was a growing number of new customers coming on board, making all of these wonderful missions here possible. Everything was going well. Everything was extremely smooth. But then in September 2016, we had the Amos 6 static fire anomaly. This was a sad day, and there wasn't going to be another launched by SpaceX until they determined why this had happened and, and obviously fixed the problem. Luckily though, we had plenty of stuff going on in between because we had Elon Musk's huge presentation on the initial ITS design. This was massive and it's actually a lot bigger than what we're now seeing with the Starship designs. Everything needed to be scaled back a little. Of course, SpaceX were back in action January 2017 with Iridium 1. That was the first mission since the disaster. But 2017 was quite the year. We had the very first reuse of the Falcon 9 booster. This was a Amazing. Along with this, there was 18 flights, all of them successful. This was a massive year. Everything really did start to become routine for SpaceX at this point. It even got to the point where missions were becoming so frequent and so routine that people started to get a little freaked out by some of this awesome footage. That there was shot just after sunset, the perfect time to capture it in that way. We of course then had the huge one, the Falcon Heavy test flight. If you look at all of the Google trends around SpaceX, this was the day. This one day was the day the world started to really take notice. We had double booster separations. We had the awesome Tesla Roadster with Starman riding in it as the test payload. We had everybody up in arms just cheering for these two boosters to come back down and land simultaneously. The first time, of course, that this has ever been done and of course after that we were all treated to a huge stream watching the Roadster and Starman circle the earth. I could watch those clips every day, just incredible stuff. It was then very shortly after that we started to see the new Block 5 version of the Falcon 9. This is the version that is still running today, much more reusable than the past versions. The first private passenger announcement here was done in September of 2018, and this was all around the changes to the Starship and Super Heavy changing to a stainless steel design. And then finally, we get to 2019, this very year, the Crew Dragon Demo 1 mission. This was just massive, and even though there was an anomaly with this particular capsule in testing later on, this mission was a huge deal for SpaceX, the first time they had ever docked to the space station without being berthed. We then of course had the second Falcon Heavy flight, and it was just as impressive as the first watching those two boosters land. We then had the first Starlink satellite missions, the first 60, the third Falcon Heavy flight, and then of course the awesome footage we got around that. Even these fairing shots were just incredible. The 
parachute tests have been going on recently. These have become more and more advanced. Beautiful footage here from a few months back. Um, you know, wonderful footage here of re-entry. This is one of my favorites so far of the Falcon 9 landing. And then all of this brings us to the Starhopper. This was an extremely awesome little test vessel that's now been retired in favor of the new Starship constructions that Elon announced back in September. New versions of the Starlink satellites as well. And all of the current excitement is around the Mark 1 Starship in Texas being developed along with the Mark 2 Starship being developed in Florida. Very exciting stuff there and that brings us 100% up to date. It really has been an... Ah, oh, son of a... Ah, uh, well, as Elon Musk says, persistence is very important. You should not give up unless you are forced to give up. There will be loads more to come with the new Starship. One thing's for sure, the mission behind SpaceX right from its very beginnings has not changed. We will eventually colonize Mars. Now, if you would like to see a lot of all of this condensed even further, I've actually made a music version using the track outro by M83. All the scene switches are meticulously matched with the music and some SpaceX audio thrown in there as well. I'm actually super proud of how all of this came out and I'd love to know what you think. And while you're here, please do consider subscribing because there is a huge amount to cover with all of the SpaceX news right now and I'd love to share it all with you. So what do you think? Did I miss out any of your favorite SpaceX clips? Out of all the highlights over the last decade, what are your favorites? Let me know in the comments. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do take a second and hit that like button. A huge thank you to my quality control squad here for helping me research and proof the material for these videos. If you're interested in these topics and would like to be a part of this, follow my Discord or Twitter link in the description and please do get in touch. In the tile in the bottom left today, we have my video from last week covering all of the amazing Starship developments continually going on. In the top right is my latest video and in the bottom right, a video that YouTube has selected from my channel just for you. Thank you all for watching and we'll see you all in the next video.